One of the things I didn't expect to be able to talk about is hemp. Jamie Bartley from the Unite Group. Jamie, hemp. Thanks, John. And yes, we are talking about hemp in part today. So firstly, thanks for joining us today. And uh, it's great to be alongside a really esteemed panel of speakers. Um, so I'm going to discuss a little bit around the Unite Group and specifically then we'll deep dive into some of the solutions that industrial hemp can provide. So within the Unite Group, we were established in 2019 and we uh, do a lot of retrofit across residential and commercial properties, so working in various different government-funded scheme, ECO4, GBs, SHDF, LADF, PSDS, <laughs> got a loving acronym. Um, we also deal with waste consultancy, both from a specialist consultancy and contracting side of things. Do a lot of contaminated land remediation and earthworks, so develop brownfield land. And then through Unite Academy, we're offering lots of training, both fully funded and heavily subsidised, and that's under past 2030 and past 2035 frameworks. So again, might be relevant, not just for installers as well and, and professionals, but we also do understanding retrofit courses, which are level twos, which are great for some of the wider administrative teams that are dealing with retrofit projects. We've done quite a bit of work from pyrolysis using energy from waste as a solution. So again, can assist different local authorities and public, se public sector departments looking at both solutions from dealing with waste and how you can valueize that waste and ultimately achieve decarbonisation. As you can see, some of the various different entities that we work quite closely with as well up there, and I'll go into a bit more detail shortly. So I won't go into the problems. I think we're all here for the same reason. We all know what the problems are, and we need to find a solution. So rather than focusing on the problems, which we've heard a lot about, and I think Chris was presenting really well this morning, we'll go into some of the solutions. Why hemp? And as John said, it is a bit strange. Well, why are we still here talking about hemp at a net zero conference? Well, the biggest one is its carbon sequestration. So hemp photosynthesizes carbon from the atmosphere when it grows, and it grows in a very short four-month to five-month growth period in the UK. It will grow anywhere in the UK, but in that four-month growth period, it will sequester 20 to 22 tonnes of carbon dioxide, both into the biomass and into the soil. And to give you a comparable, from the same size area of rainforest in that time period, the rainforest would sequester 25 times less carbon dioxide than the hemp would. We'll go into a little bit more around some of the impressive features of hemp and the growth that it can put on in that time period shortly. But one of the main positives as well, it doesn't need insecticides, pesticides, and most soils don't even need fertilizers in the UK. So that means we can grow it really sustainably. It's great for a crop rotation. It improves the following crop yields by 16 to 18% by winter wheat or spring barley in our trials. So it's a really good crop for farmers to have in their crop rotation. But biodiversity as well, it, because it doesn't need any pesticide or insecticides, it's a great late season source of pollen for our bees and pollinators. It improves the attenuation capacity of the soil, so it reduces flood risk, and it also brings up lots of micro and macronutrients from quite deep down in the soils that normal crops wouldn't reach, and deposits them in the shallower soil profile, which enables the following crops to benefit from those. So there's lots of multiple benefits of having it in a rotation, but the big one's a carbon sink. When it sequesters all that CO2 out the atmosphere, and then it's locked up into the building walls, that CO2 is locked up for the lifespan of that building. So it's a long-term carbon sinker. That, so it's a nature-based solution, ultimately. Just a couple of little um, parts around hemp again. It actually requires 10 times less water to cultivate and to process into textiles. This is all hemp I'm wearing today, and this will take 10 times less water. So we talk about natural resource, we talk about scarcity of water and the need to really start protecting water as a resource. Let's start looking at cultivating crops that don't need as much water. Again, zero inputs and the carbon sequestration. Those are the big ones. Some of the other products that we're not going to go into too much detail, but bioethanol, green hydrogen, textiles, biocomposites, but we're going to focus mainly on construction materials today because those have got so much potential for retrofitting and for new build sectors. So that's a crop that we grew up this year in Shropshire. As you can see, that, was, that crop was about 3.6 metres tall in just four months this year. So it literally grows like wildfire. It takes all the CO2 out, out the atmosphere and stores that in the biomass. And obviously, as that goes back into the uh, people, people are then breathing that oxygen in and releasing the CO2 back out. 
continually in the carbon cycle. But nature will always beat technology. So we took people talking about direct air capture. Yes, it potentially has a place, but look at the scale that we can do with hemp. So we've got 4.8 arable acres, uh, 4.8 million arable acres of land in the UK. So we can really truly scale this. And each ton of hemp fiber has 1.67 tons of carbon embodied to it. So you can really have a big net effect if we just start utilizing it as a bio-based feedstock for insulation and building materials. So this is a little bit about the process then. So as I said, we cultivate the hemp, as you can see here in the top corner. It's then harvested and baled into bales, straw bales in essence, it looks like once it's into that point. And then we go into a primary process, which is actually called decortication. What that really means is we separate the out, outer bast fibre, which you can see at the top picture there, and then the shiv, which in essence are like small wood chips. And those two materials are then co-combined with natural binders, so ins into insulation, and then it's a lime binder that we use for the hempcrete blocks. And then those products can be recombined into either new, new build, low carbon houses, or also for retrofitting. And one of the big points I think not was missed today but might have been slightly overlooked we've heard some great solutions to decarbonizing heat we've heard some great solutions to decarbonizing electric what we actually need to do is reduce our demand for all of those by retrofitting insulating the buildings properly because if we improve the building fabric first then we don't need as much electricity and we don't need as much heat so we'll come on to a little bit more detail around that shortly. These are some examples of different projects that have utilised hempcrete and hemp insulation materials around the UK. And some more of the commercial size projects there as well. Uh, so this is, a this is a property on the north shores of Scotland, or sorry, near Inverness. And without any internal heating on at all, all year round, the internal temperature doesn't change between 16 to 18 degrees, no matter what the weather's doing outside. So when we talk about fuel poverty and reducing people's fuel bills, let's start retrofitting and building with hemp materials because then we don't need anywhere near as much energy. Again, some more examples, very similar up in Scotland. Uh, it's another one from Perthshire. So this was a hemp pod that was uh, actually put together by Bath University in 2012. And the hygroformal high performance is modelled. And as you can see there again, with the internal temperature, which is the larger part of the graph, Sorry, the, the external temperature is a large part of the, gra the graph with the phase shift and then the internal temperature pretty much again consistently two degrees change. And people talk about passive house construction. If we build a passive house today using conventional materials, which the majority of them are being built with, it will achieve net zero carbon by 2062. If we build that exactly the same passive house using hemp construction materials, it achieves net zero carbon by 2037. So we talk about accelerating an impact, we've got a massive opportunity to do that if we embrace hemp as one of the solutions. And just to finish off on a quote from Sir David Attenborough, I really, uh, I really appreciate this quote, I think it aligns so well. We need to stop living at one with the planet and start living as one with the planet. So thanks for your time everyone, feel free to come and find us outside for any more information.